throughout the series, we'll be sending our roving reporter, Marcus Irvine, into the field to speak with the experts about repair methodologies. This week, he meets geotechnical engineer Jordan Walker to talk about the process of house lifting. Engineers, builders, loss adjusters, and quantity surveyors, as well as other key consultants, provide input to the insurance company. And the insurance company, on the advice of those experts, makes a decision on what solution is appropriate. When is it okay to exempt repair work from council consent? When the repair work satisfies the conditions of Schedule 1 of the Building Code, which allows certain works to be done without consent. And those are essentially, provided an engineer can satisfy council that the repair works will be no worse than the building was before the repair, then it will be appropriate to issue that work as an exemption. The Building Act and the Building Code is easily searchable online as well, so if anybody wants to educate themselves on the specific legal requirements, they can just do a simple Google search to find that. I know, for example, that not all technical category 3, TC3 land necessarily needs a TC3 foundation or repair strategy. Yeah, so the technical category is, um, it refers to the foundation technical category, and these were prepared by CIRA in order to assist uh, engineer the engineering body to apply their attention to the more critical sites. That engineer may visit the site and under their judgment classify a site or deem that, it, a, that the site is more likely to be a TC1 on a, even though it's designated TC3 for example, through observations of that property. Generally speaking, all properties can be repaired. However, some repairs will cost more than others. And so a decision needs to be made on what is the most cost-effective solution that still meets those requirements of the Building Act and the Building Code. My understanding is in, on this instance, the building, the structure itself performed adequately. However, the foundations underwent enough damage that it was appropriate to repair or replace those foundations. A number of key personnel would have provided input to that decision. A structural engineer and a geotech engineer together would have decided that it was appropriate to replace the foundation in this instance. In this instance, the structure could be saved and it was found to be more cost efficient to lift the structure up, remove the old foundations, dig new foundations and relay them. And in this instance, they're, they're strictly 3604 type foundations, which are good ground foundations that can be put on good ground. So that would tell me that the, the future performance of this site will be no worse than it was before the earthquakes, and so an engineer has deemed it appropriate to put in 3604 foundations because they've considered the loads of the building, the likely future loads on that building, and that those foundations will be appropriate to support it over the future life of that building as well. In this instance, the house is quite low off the ground. This is because we don't need to go in and, and, and do any works to the ground other than shallow excavations for the new foundations. Um, that means we don't need to get any heavy equipment in there to move around, so it's appropriate to lift the house to this level. Now, if we were doing deeper works, then we may have to raise it on, on some of these um, house raising systems that you've seen. If there is sufficient land available on the site to stockpile that home while those works are going on, then the preferred solution would be to lift it and roll it to that area on the property. That would allow that building footprint where the housework is going to be undertaken, or the building work is going to be undertaken, to be clear of any obstructions. It's a safer working environment, and it's generally going to be more efficient to undertake those works because you're not trying to meander in around obstructions and bracing. So the insurance company is the, is the responsible entity in this instance. They're overseeing the repair, replacement, rebuild of the structure, of a damaged structure. However, they're not qualified themselves to make those decisions, so they engage experts to assist them through that process. So how does the structural integrity of the house stand up to being lifted or lifted and rolled? Is, is there any racking and twisting that happens and how does that affect things? Yes, that, that's actually a very good question. Um, and that's one of the biggest concerns to homeowners when they're told that their house is gonna be lifted. Now, when that decision is made, again, under the building code, all building works must, must meet certain criteria for durability and protection of life, not only of the workers, but the occupants of that home as well. And so temporary works still need to meet those requirements of the code. So we, we still need to confirm that that building will not undergo any damage or catastrophic failure as a worst case scenario while we're doing those temporary works. So an engineer would actually 
specifically calculate out the bracing requirements of the structure to confirm that there's sufficient bracing in the, in the lifted structure once it's removed from its foundations to resist that racking and twisting, as you say. So, and if there isn't sufficient bracing within the dwelling, then they would design temporary bracing measures to support that structure. Can you explain what ground improvement is and why it's needed? Where we deem that the ground does not have suitable strength or there is a hazard present on the land, then as an engineer you develop a solution to remediate for that. And so in some instances it is more cost effective to improve the land to allow a standard foundation to be placed on that land than to increase the capacity of the foundation using cement and steel. So gravel, for example, or metal, is cheaper than reinforcing steel and concrete. So if you can excavate out and, dent and prepare a densified crust using compacted gravel with some geogrids laid into it, that will strengthen up that surface crust and allow a standard TC1 or TC2 foundation, depending on the determination of the engineer, to be constructed on that surface. And that's, that decision is made through this process of identifying the technical category, sufficient investigation, predicting the likely future performance, assessing how it's performed in the recent events, and satisfying yourself as an engineer that your solution is appropriate. If council accepts an exemption under section two of schedule one of the building code, then they are satisfied that the works will be no worse than previous. The only way that they can be satisfied of that is if they receive suitable sufficient documentation from somebody that they, they recognize as being qualified to provide that documentation. In most instances, that's a professional engineer. So a professional engineer would need to have involvement in that project to satisfy council at the end that the works were done in accordance with the building code, the building act, and that inspections were undertaken at various parts of that, of that process as well. Next week, we look into the very complicated issue of settling insurance claims for multi-unit buildings and shared properties. What do you do if neighbours on a shared property can't agree or one of you is uninsured? And we'll also look at more complex land issues. Join us next week right here on Covered. Mm -hmm.